and happy morning to all of you. I've got an interesting topic uh, today. I don't know how many of you will connect to it, but I connect a lot because I'm very deeply interested in what people do and why they do what they do and where they land up with what they do. Youngsters who have great ambitions and goals to become the CEO of an MNC or become you know, a cricket or football player, win the international and uh, world cups and all that, starting from those type of goals and ambitions where they finally, what they do finally and where they land up and what they do, all these uh, uh, things I keep watching right up to the time when people retire and they look back at what they uh, have done in their uh, you know, uh, life. I'm very fascinated uh, with uh, a uh, quote by a very uh, famous poet called uh, uh, Raghupati Sahai. Raghupati uh, uh, Sahai had the pen name of uh, um, you know, uh, Gorakhpuri. He uh, was very interestingly uh, a English professor in uh, Allahabad University, a great uh, scientist of uh, uh, I mean, uh, a great scholar of uh, Sanskrit, and his hobby was to write uh, Urdu poetry in very simple terms. One of his very simple uh, you know, couplets, which uh, has always fascinated with uh, to me, is when he said, "Kya bataye yara, kya bataye yara, kya kare numaya kar gaye." Oh, friends, what should I tell you about my great achievements? क्या बताएं यारा क्या कार्य नुमाया कर गए पैदा हुए बीए किया नौकरी मिली वजीफा हुआ मर गए I was born I studied I got a job I retired and I died that defines the lives of so many people who are looking at a very, very basic thing of, you know, what career should I take up? What job should I take up? Where can I get more money? Where can I get promotions? Where can I get some status and all these uh, uh, things? And finally, they end up their uh, lives and they look back, uh, you know, what have they really uh, uh, achieved? Okay. For that, let me just uh, uh, take you a little back into uh, history uh, what if you uh, hardly anybody would recall little more than 100 years uh, uh, back you uh, are you aware that the course of study which was most in demand in the sense which was supposed to be at the highest level like today anybody and everybody wants to get into IT because they think that IT is the best career etc the same way, if you go a little more than 100 years back, you will be amazed to know that the course most in demand was philosophy. Those who studied philosophy were meant to be going right up to the top, be it in politics, be it in civil services, be it in literature or academics or whatever it is. This was before the industrial era. So they were supposed to be the people who were, you know, uh, going right up to the top. People who studied philosophy were supposed to be the people who are going to be achieving most. Okay. From there, people, I think, became a little more practical. And they said, no, let us, uh, you know, talk about some uh, learning or something which can be more useful at a practical level, which can get us knowledge, which can help us to move uh, directly into the world of, uh, you know, work. And so you'll be surprised. The course that went up highest in demand was law. If you just reflect on it, Mahatma Gandhi studied uh, law. Both Motilal Nehru and Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru studied uh, law. Sardar Patel studied uh, law. Endless stream of people. The greatest achievers, the people who really went up in life, their basic qualification was law. And then slowly, 
the industrial revolution came in and people started moving more and more towards the technical courses. In fact, in the 1930s and 40s, there was one gentleman, Sir M. Vishweshwaraya. He rose up to become not only the Diwan of the Royal Mysore state, but he also became an advisor to many other states who would invite him to come and help out in their administration and their setup and whatever it is. He was the first technocrat to reach that height. No technocrat had ever come to such positions of eminence because at that time, you know, technical studies were supposed to be something like a supplementary thing. You know, the engineers would be the people who would assist the administrators and the financiers and all these people who are the top level people by giving whatever are the technical inputs. That's all they were supposed to be. In fact, it was very interesting that in the year 2017, five years back, I was invited to IIT Roorkee to conduct a workshop for uh, uh, them. IIT Roorkee incidentally started off as a technical um, institute primarily for the army. The uh, you know, engineering division of the British army of those good old uh, days what was known as the Calcutta Sappers, like how in Bangalore we have the Madras Sappers. The Calcutta Sappers uh, were headquartered in Roorkee. So they decided to have a technical institute for them. And for the first time, they decided that not only the military people, some people who are non-military also have to be trained in technical matters. Because by the time we were rowing, uh, laying roads, building bridges, building bigger uh, uh, structures. So they said that we also need engineers in the civil world away from the technical world. And that is how the word civil engineering was coined. Even today I ask people who have qualified as civil engineers and who have been working in the world of civil engineering, when I ask them, why do you think that your branch of engineering is named civil engineering? Why not construction engineering? Why not structures engineering? And believe me, most of them don't know the answer. The answer was told to me by my grandfather. It is such an amazing coincidence that he graduated from this, you know, engineering college of Rurki in the year 1917 AD. And exactly a hundred years later, I was invited to give a talk or a workshop uh, over uh, there. He was one of the first batches of people who went to engineering college Roorkee to get trained as a civil engineer because he was not part of the military uh, setup. This is just to give you an example how times change, lives change, careers uh, change. And we conveniently forget, we are so short-sighted that we look at only what is eminent and what is uh, uh, prominent uh, uh, now. Okay, you are aware that as we came closer to independence and when the opportunities for Indians to get into the higher uh, administrative services opened out, the Indian Civil Service, which originally started off as exclusive only for Britishers, opened its doors to Indians on a very selective basis. Very eminent, very hardworking and very outstanding young men could aspire to become Indian civil service of officers. So that became the number one. Regardless of what you have studied in college, the ultimate aim for somebody, the ultimate in terms of career would be to get into the Indian civil service. And interestingly, for years and decades after independence, the successor of ICS, that is the IAS, continues to be one of the most alluring careers that you can ever uh, think of. In South India, you may not have felt the impact of it so much. If you go to North India and see every second young man and maybe every third young woman is aspiring to get into civil services by hook or crook. 
I know of people who year after year, year after year, keep giving the civil services exam and not doing anything uh, uh, else, wasting their time. Because they think that the ultimate in life is to get into the civil uh, service. Parallel to all this that was happening, the uh, women who initially were not even supposed to study, not even supposed to go to school after the first few years and all that, so only started going for higher education. So what about their uh, careers? A small fraction of women would go into medicine. They would become doctors. And they were exempt from all the restrictions that women are supposed to have. They could go out on their own. They could drive their vehicles. They could stay out late in the night. They could do night duties. They could interact freely with men. They were given the exemption. All other women in early 20th century, mid 20th century were told that being a woman, you should not indulge in you know, careers which have late nights or which have interaction with men or which have too much of stresses that will affect your domestic uh, lives. So what did they uh, do? They took up jobs in teaching, home science, studying basic humanities subjects like uh, you know, history or sociology and all that. And most of the time being contented being homemakers and not going out to work or earn money as their husbands were uh, doing. This was the time when engineering overtook everything else. So other than medicine, which of course has always continued to be one of the careers in demand, but the problem with medicine was that uh, number one, it has got very, very few seats. So it's not that easy. You have to really be excellent to get admission into uh, MBBS. And also the fact that it people knew that it involves years and years and years of rigorous study and not everybody was ready for it. So in the latter half of second uh, of 20th century, the one course which everybody thought opens the gates for any type of good career was engineering. And what happened was that people who joined engineering did not join engineering to become engineers. They joined engineering to use it as a foundation to go on to something else. For the last 50 years, for example, IIMs, Indian Institutes of Management, 80 to 90% of their intake has been engineers. Why is it that people who study management at the degree level, BBA, for example, so three years they study management and then they give the entrance exam to get into IIM, they don't make it. Not even 5% of the IIM students come from the BBA uh, background. Whereas people who have spent four years studying the technical subjects, engineering, technology, how is it that they make it into IIMs? And that's only one example I'm gi giving you. Take civil services, take military service, take anything. Engineers always dominated. Economics, finance, fields which apparently have nothing to do with engineering. And engineers kept on uh, dominating them. One of my great heroes whom I admire great, very, very much is uh, uh, you know, Mr. Raghuram Rajan, who was the governor of Reserve Bank of India. He's an engineering uh, uh, graduate. And like that, there were innumerable people who came up. Then came the turn into the 21st century. And after that, engineering has been narrowed down to IT. I don't know if you're aware, through CET in a state like Karnataka, there are more than 30 branches of engineering available and most of them have no demand at all left. Just to give you an example, one reputed private university opened a new campus and announced 700 seats for computer science engineering. There were 10,000 applicants. Each had to pay 10,000 rupees non-refundable fees and they paid it. 10,000 applicants for 700 seats. They also have 40 seats in their mechanical engineering department and the 40 were not fully filled up. They didn't even get 40 applicants. 
mechanical engineering, an evergreen field of technology. This is what is making people blind to what really needs to be done. And that is why I'm sure many of you find that today you are doing something which you have not qualified for or which you have not studied for or which was never your uh, goal or aim in uh, uh, life. Anyway, no harm uh, in that. Times have changed. Law has again, uh, you know, become a very uh, uh, much in demand career, hospitality, design. So many of these new, new uh, things have started, uh, you know, coming up. But only one uh, area of concern which I wanted to share with you is today we are referring to all businesses in two categories, the brick companies and the click companies. Brick companies represent bricks, that means structures, infrastructure, machines, raw materials, transport, all these things. The click companies are starting and ending with the laptop. So there is a huge category of brick companies and there is a huge category of click companies. I just wanted to caution you, not that I'm taking sides or I am critical about anything. The way click companies have overtaken brick companies, the way people seem to think that the whole world is restricted to the 17 inch uh, screen of the uh, laptop. I think we are going off direction. You cannot have a world of click companies without the brick company. Even when you sit down to work on your uh, laptop, there is a canteen fellow who makes the tea and snacks and serves it to you. He's a brick company. You go to work in an automobile that is, the cars are made by the brick companies. You live in luxurious apartments. The houses and apartments are made by brick companies, but somewhere we are neglecting it. So please keep that in mind. The point which I actually wanted to you know, emphasize on uh, today is that regardless of what you have studied and what you are doing now, including even if you are a homemaker, you don't, you're not associated with some you know, institution or commercial organization, you spend your time taking care of your family either way. I would like you to wake up and think in today's world, there are so many opportunities, including for women. The type of doors which have opened to women in the last 10 years is unbelievably high. One of the classic examples was, I think it is six years now that I was privileged to be in the Air Force Technical College when they selected the first three women fighter pilots. Those three, all three have completed the uh, course successfully and every year they're adding. Last year, I think it was six. Before that, it was four or whatever. Uh, it is small numbers. And the beauty of it is, barring one odd girl here and there, every one of them who gets selected and undergoes the rigorous training to fight, uh, to fly a jet, fighter jet, they're all passing and they are all getting commissioned as uh, fighter pilots. Tomorrow, if there is an attack on our country, among the people who will be defending us in the air will be these young women. Now, this is just to give an idea about how the world is changing and what opportunities are uh, there, both for men and women. If today you find yourself at some crossroads, if you find that you are not at a crossroad, but you're just going on and on and on walking on one path, just because you think that there is nothing on the left and right and because there is a road and I have to keep walking on that uh, uh, road only, you are mistaken. Today's session, I wanted to just shake you up and make you think that regardless of what is your age, regardless of what qualifications you hold, you may have actually qualified in something very high and not used it or are using it, 
You may be a person who did not go in for higher studies. You just did a very basic education and stopped and then got involved in whatever family business or taking care of family or whatever. It is, it does not matter. Today, it is imperative on you because I've been telling this earlier, if you remember, that change is not just the permanent thing in life. You have to anticipate and adapt to change before it comes in. So today, if you're very complacent saying that, okay, it doesn't matter. I'm happy being a homemaker. I'm happy being, doing my little business or I'm happy in whatever career I'm doing. Some transformation, some change may suddenly come somewhere where you may be forced to bring about a change in yourself. Before that happens, I want you to please sit up and think. Where is your career headed? Including, I repeat again, a career as a homemaker. Because your primary focus as a homemaker is only till your children fly out of the nest. Once your children fly out of the nest, and almost every child of today is going to fly out of the nest, those days are gone when children used to grow up, qualify, take up jobs, continue to be in their parents' house, get married, bring their wife home and continue to live in their parents' house, have children and continue to live in their parents' house. That is what we used to refer to as joint families. That era is closing very fast. So if you have children at home and if you are a homemaker who is enjoying playing the role of a homemaker, mother, housewife, whatever you want to call it. Please remember that your retirement is going to come very soon. Maybe faster than the superannuation age of 60. The moment your children fly out of the nest, the question will arise, what do I do with myself now? There's very little to do if you have been only taking care of your children and the house. Even the house settles down as you grow older, you know, you have very reliable domestic help. You have learned how to minimize the needs of the home so that you don't have to slog and clean and scrub every day. You've done all those things. But what have you done for yourself? And if you're all of 40 years, 50 years, even 60 years, you have another 30, 40 years ahead of you minimum working life. Because the way healthcare is going, and I am repeatedly reminding people, you will be fit and fine to work till you are at least 75, 80, if not more. So what are you planning? Starting with, as I said, your basic education. In your basic education, you studied something. I can assure you it will not go best. Don't say, yes, I qualified in such and such field, but at my age or given my circumstances, there are no jobs available in that field. So what do I do? That is wrong. With the way, you know, the uh, connectivity and internet and all that has improved. With the way globalization has taken uh, place, location does not matter. You can sit at home, be in any nook and corner. You can be in Bangalore, you can be in Chikmagalur, you can be in Chikbalapur. If you have the desire to connect with the rest of the world, you can do it. And that is what I want you to give a serious thought. Starting from what is the education that you learned and today at this stage of life, in what ways can that be utilized? Don't let go so easily. Something or the other will be there from your education, which you can uh, learn. A classic example was my own elder brother. He somehow always wanted to be a cop to get into the IPS. But as it happens in those days, you know, elders said, no, 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 you need to have a professional degree. So since you are not interested in medicine, what does he do? He goes and 
you know, gets into engineering. He got into a good engineering college, studied mechanical engineering, came out with good marks, gave the UPSC exams and got selected. Now he becomes an IPS officer. What has an IPS officer got to do with mechanical engineering, right? One fine day it so happened, Bombay City had invited a German uh, uh, company to come and help them to streamline their traffic signals so that when vehicles get a green signal at one point and they go up to the next signal, by the timing, that signal should turn green. So they started making these electronic corridors. I'm talking about 30 years back, more than that. Now they came in to do their work but they wanted somebody local to liaise with them, to facilitate them, to see that their project is implemented. And out of all the IPS officers available there at that time, my brother was the only one who was an engineer. So immediately he was picked. And when they started talking technology to him, he didn't have to do the technical part of it, but he could speak that language. He could understand exactly what they're talking about. And that is what made him stand out among dozens and dozens of his uh, uh, colleagues. Just one simple example I'm giving you. There are innumerable examples like this, if you really want to think of uh, it. I know of people who've gone into whatever their domain specialization done very well. And at one point decided that I like to do something with the youth. I have good communication skills. I connect to people very well. So now that I've earned so much money and I've got so much of success, let me get into teaching. I have so many friends who took that brave decision, came down from a very high corporate salary to a teacher's or professor's salary, but they have none of them have regretted it. They have all gone ahead and they are now enjoying those because as you grow older, the pressure on you as a teacher is much less than if you had been a vice president or general manager or whatever you are in the corporate uh, world. So they are getting the best of both worlds. They're growing old now very gracefully, very happily and being productive members of society, which will continue far beyond the so-called, you know, superannuation or retirement uh, age of 60 uh, uh, years. But before I end the first half of this uh, uh, session and take a quick break and then move on to the question uh, answer, I already see some questions coming in on the um, chat box. I just wanted to leave you with one very important message and that is whatever you do, do not go against your basic values. I come across so many people who say, you cannot be honest in my profession. You cannot uphold that so-called morals and principles and all that. In the real world, you have to bend rules and you have to bend your uh, morals. Otherwise, you won't survive. Somehow, I beg to differ. I think those who have that courage to say, okay, if I'm working for an organization which does not allow me to uphold my values and morals, I will move on to something else. But I will not accede to this uh, thing of, you know, bending my moral values, bending my attitudes and my principles in life. That is one thing which is tough. It requires a lot of struggle. But once you do it and start moving on the other side of the path. I assure you, you will be able to look back and be very happy with whatever you have done, right? Okay, with that, let me take a quick one minute break and have my cup of tea. And Mira is going to make just one or two important announcements to you. Yes, hello everyone. So uh, our uh, DCS uh, course, the admissions are closing soon. 
and uh, you know like we get a lot of people who uh, you know come when the courses uh, when we have closed the admissions and uh, you know they ask us that we wanted to join so we have decided to keep the admissions open for a few more days so if you feel anyone can benefit from it or anyone is interested in it then please do let us know and contact us uh, our numbers are on the screen and also in the chat box uh, as uh, ali was saying that you know being productive and uh, you know doing something useful so our uh, hh volunteering wing also is up and about full fledged and a lot of people are doing their service to community and society so if you feel or you feel anybody has 3 hours to give in the week so you can also get in touch with us for uh, volunteering at various hospitals and uh, institutions like we say banjara is an institution with an heart and uh, we are completely left brain uh, sorry completely right brain so we welcome all of you in any uh, way that we can uh, be there for you so uh, we also um, like uh, when we talk about dcs it's completely uh, human related aspects and uh, we look forward to seeing you yes i am back now that i have given you so much of sharing as you see primarily i share experiences i share what i learn from others i share by observing people over long periods of time not that short sightedness that you do this and this will happen you do that and that will happen i look at things from a very holistic and a long term perspective so i have done my sharing now let us see what are your comments sonia says before children grow up we have to plan what we are going to do when free otherwise we will feel bored and useless so better plan one good hobby or something that uh, we would like uh, or we should do i started taking tuitions and pursue my painting and reading keeping oneself busy is most important excellent examples when you are a role model to so many others people particularly parents mothers get so engrossed in child upbringing that they forget that they have any other role and that is when they get hit very badly as i said when children fly out of the uh, next okay saraf saab is here from maharashtra and he is an educator and he runs uh, takes care of children in the hostel and all that so it's always a pleasure to welcome him he says the highest return giving professions get recruited to only few below three digit numbers so whosoever is able to stood within 100 aspirants you are capable nor will you be disgusted with failures that's the type of spirit i want each one of you to have do not go by what we refer to as the herd mentality do not you know just jump into something because everybody is doing it have your own mind have your own thinking have the courage to swim against the tide and then you will uh, uh, succeed it is not very difficult i can assure you i know of people even today who are picking up careers changing careers even late in life who are understanding where their real passion lies 
like I gave the example of some of my friends who did very well in the corporate world and then switched over to teaching. I also know of people, for example, who have switched over to moving out, for example, from the hustle and bustle of a metropolitan city, going to a small place and changing their entire lifestyle. Some of them have gone into farming. Some of them have gone into some craftsmanship. Some of them have gone into some other you know, type of uh, work or business. One of the classic examples uh, was I met a lady on a hill station. She said that I had put my two sons in this residential school. And after a few years, while the academics was very good, I was being you know, cautioned that teenage boys are getting spoiled by getting into bad habits. So you know what she did? She found a plot of small plot of land opposite the gate of the school. And she opened a tiny coffee shop there. And she is there. If these children want to go out of school and do something naughty, the moment they leave the gate, mommy is sitting right uh, there. At the same time, mommy became a very good friend and aunt to so many of their children's classmates. They would come out, sit and have a cup of coffee with them and she would do counseling. Soon she realized that this is something which is my forte. And she got deeper and deeper into counseling. Today she's a very successful counselor. Her children have grown up and flown the nest and everything. But she feels that I have found a direction to my life. Like that I keep getting so many examples, so many people you know, who are getting into this uh, uh, thing of examining. Firstly, whatever you have learned, I repeat again, whatever you had learned earlier, please go back and see if anything out of that is relevant to you. Not necessarily what you studied in the textbooks or what was told to you in the lectures, but even by the environment there, even by the type of people who are uh, there. For example, in IIT Bombay, where I, no, I didn't study there. I lived there for five years. Anyway, if I recall, there were so many of my friends and my seniors who became role models to me in a very different uh, uh, manner. There was three years senior to uh, me, you know, a person who used to write very revolutionary uh, 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 writings. His name is Sudhindra Kulkarni. He studied metallurgical engineering, same as me. In my uh, department, that's how I got to know him, though he was much senior to me. His writing inspired us so much. He used to write something or the other and just put it up somewhere, you know, in a prominent place. Uh, and we used to be fascinated to read it. Years later, he found his calling by writing extensively on matters relating to the country. He went on to becoming the speech writer of Atal Bihari Vajpayee and L.K. Advani, the Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister of the country. He still writes very extensively and very beautifully. So now, the, again, as an example to show you that you can get in to something at any point of uh, life. I would like to share with you an amazing example of one of my uh, batchmates. He was from civil engineering department. His father was a postman in Gujarat. And he was the eldest of seven siblings. By the time he was coming to 12th standard, his father was nearing retirement. His father said, you complete your 12th standard with first class marks. I will somehow request my seniors and authorities to get you a job as a postman or equivalent, which is going to be a permanent central government job with a pension, etc. And the moment you get that job and I retire and my uh, you know, earning goes down, you have to look after your younger brothers and sisters. OK, now this boy was an ambitious boy without telling his father he appeared for the IIT entrance exam and got selected. The day he was selected, he went happily and told his father, see, 
I've got admission into a top uh, institution. I can qualify and I can earn and I can do a lot of things. His father said nothing doing. As I told you that time, engineering was five years. He said, five years, I am not going to support you. I'm not going to pay a single rupee to you. I am expecting you to earn. But if you don't earn, I'm not even going to provide you with food. I'm not going to give you a single rupee. And even in the holidays, if you want to come and stay at home, you have to pay for your boarding and lodging. Such tough conditions his own father put. And this boy took up the challenge. He landed up there. And he used every possible means to earn money. Ball pens had just started getting very popular. He went and found out the source of where the ball pens were manufactured, some small scale industry somewhere, somewhere. Got those ball pens in wholesale at a very low price. Made a huge, uh, you know, plywood uh, table type of thing which he hung to his neck and would go to the nearest local railway station, Vikroli and Kanjurmag, and stand there selling ball pens in the evenings. That is how he funded his education. And then, because when he was passing out, he had to take up a job immediately. And the interesting part is, he knew that jobs were plenty for IIT graduates. But where does he stay? It's easier in uh, uh, Bombay to get a job. It's easier in Bombay to get a wife than to get a place to stay. So he came to know that the Bombay Municipal Corporation was offering jobs which come with accommodation. And he jumped at it. I think he is the first and last IIT graduate to take up a Municipal Corporation job. But he did exceedingly well. All his spare time he spent looking after street urchins educating them, taking care of their welfare, seeing to it that they are not harassed by these motor mechanics and darshanis, you know, who believe in child labor. He used his clout to see that these children are well looked after and happily retired as the chief engineer of the Brahan Mumbai Mahanagar Palike. And he continues with his uh, uh, you know, exemplary uh, work. This is just to tell you that even while, for example, he could in no way give up his job because he was taking for years and years, he was taking care of all his uh, siblings and his parents and all that. He was a sole uh, no, uh, bread earner. But at the same time, he found something meaningful, which today, after his retirement, he says, my pension is more than enough to take care of me and my wife. His only daughter has flown out of the nest and is happy with her, her own life. So he says, my pension is more than enough. Now I keep doing work, which I thoroughly enjoy. And he will continue to do that as long as he is fit and fine, as long as his hands and legs are working, he will be active. Ah, Vijay Lakshmi says, even I am engaged so much in my job all these years. I had forgotten about my hobbies, forgotten about my friends. After a few months, I started connecting to my old friends. Now I feel very good chatting with them. I came to know about myself. No, I am able to use my free time by drawing, painting, which was forgotten long time ago. Excellent example. Thanks a lot for sharing with us. Simple, basic, truthful sharing of real life. If you have that in you, maybe one of you Watching this program used to like painting or drawing or music or whatever it is, but you give it up because you knew that it's not practical. I can't really be a professional in this field, so I might as well give up and uh, reconcile to the fact that I have to live this, this, this routine life. But can I, for, for example, what Vijay Lakshmi shared, you know, about the old friends, I somehow have been experiencing that your childhood friends are more sincere, more genuine than friends you make in adult life. Give a serious thought to it. I even tell our DCS students who join every year, 
how connected are you to your childhood and primary school uh, uh, friends would you like to make efforts to connect to them and not just by this whatsapp group where everybody keeps writing some silly uh, things and everybody keeps putting forwards i'm talking at a one to one level what is life 20 years 40 years after getting out from school how have you been coping how have i been coping what have you done with your life what have i done with my life There's so much to learn and since you grew up with those people you know there's a lot of connectedness there's a lot of empathy there's a lot of understanding compared to those whom you met only in your uh, adult uh, uh, life so if you can think of things like these simple examples what has been shared uh, uh, with you i can assure you that life can be very meaningful you can improve your education that's another thing that has happened in the last couple of decades at any age without having to be very academically oriented without having to sit for hours together you know mugging up or writing assignments or attending classes you can upgrade your qualifications do you know that indira gandhi national open university of india has become the largest open university in the world they have the highest number of students compared to any other university anywhere in the world that is the type of facility and they still maintain their standards they have excellent study materials they are very reasonable in their uh, uh, fees you can join twice a year they have an intake if you are particular about getting yourself degrees and all that enroll for a degree program if you are already a graduate enroll for a post graduate program which is ugc recognized which is recognized by government of india which is acknowledged for jobs but more than anything else it gives you that boost that even at 30 years or 60 years i can still upgrade myself and still capable of doing something well at the same time if you say no i've got too many things in my life i don't want to you know start uh, uh, getting into academics and sitting for hours and study there are short term courses one year six months so many of them if you don't even want to do that please look out for mooc courses m o o c massive online open courses it started many years back when stanford university professor some of them who said that i've been teaching for 20 years 30 years 40 years i have certain knowledge which i want to leave behind as a legacy i want to give it out to the young generation without expecting any financial rewards so they came out with some of these mooc courses in their area of specialization which were made available to anybody in any part of the world most of them free of cost some of them if you want a certificate you have to pay for it some of them have a very nominal fee in hundreds not even in thousands and the you know the uh, range is so wide it is unbelievable oxford university took it up iits in india took it up so many reputed institutions and very reputed teachers of those institutions very experienced teachers they formulated these mooc courses and they have uploaded it on the internet do it at your own pace there is no time limit there is no restriction there is no pressure on uh, you but there is so much to learn and a sense of satisfaction that whatever my age be see i got myself this qualification i learned this new uh, uh, skill and sometimes it need not be in the realm of academics at all it could be learning a skill like i mentioned earlier about drawing or uh, uh, painting one of you mentioned that it could be music it could be sports it could be just about uh, anything i have a uh, friend or counselee who after retiring at 60 came to know that there is a thing called veterans um, uh, athletics and she has done so well in that she has gone up to the nationals level as an athlete 
in the veterans category, that is people who are above 60 year, years. And that is keeping her fit, that is keeping her, you know, positive, that is keeping her going into, you know, being a competitive person and trying to achieve various uh, uh, things, right? Ah, Parveen says, my best friend is my school friend from class. 42 years of friendship and it is stronger now. Yes, Parveen, I agree with you. There are so many of them here and there lurking around. Just because we have lost connect with them, we don't feel so comfortable. We are in our you know, comfort zone. My neighbors, my current friends, people in my society or my club, colleagues from office. Yes, nothing wrong with them. I'm glad that you are interacting with them and you're socializing with the, uh, them. But at the same time, as I said, go back and start all the way from your school days so that you can very freely sit and discuss. Okay, after school, I went on to do BCom, you went on to do BE. I got into this particular profession, you went into that. Today, when we look at things 42 years later, as Parveen says, where have you headed? Where have I headed? What change can I bring in? What change can you bring in? Sometimes they will even remind you. You remember in your school days, you used to be so good in theater. Every time you used to be selected for the class plays and we all used to admire how your acting is. So why not get into uh, something of that sort of performing arts, mentoring uh, uh, people, becoming a life skills coach. Such wonderful opportunities are there and most of them are flexible. They do not require you to you know, take up that typical nine to five job and be under that corporate pressure and all the time being, you know, in a hurry and being rushed up and things like that. Yes, the full form is M-O-O-C, not M-O-G, M-O-O-C. When you expand it, it reads Massive Online Open Courses. So many of them, are, it's amazing, you know, you will be spoiled for uh, choice or for selection when you start reading the uh, types of courses that are being offered. It's like suddenly landing up in a big, huge mall in Dubai and seeing the variety of things which are there and you don't know what to choose uh, from. So here it can come right at the, inside your own house and onto your computer and from there you can. And if you can make a team and do it together, discuss with each other what your learnings uh, are and how you can you know, benefit from it or keep boosting each other. For example, we have uh, some of our DCA students who as a group got into the psychology master's uh, course, MA in psychology from IGNU. And every night, almost every night, they would get together for an hour, discuss the lessons. Whoever was an expert in that and whoever had read up earlier would read out to the others and tell them and give them like a private tuition. They would have an open discussion about the pluses, minuses, what they have learned, what they are not learning. And by that, they gave a boost to each other. Otherwise, sitting at home, you have enrolled for a master's program. Then you realize that you have domestic responsibilities. You have health issues and this and that. You slowly start, you know, getting demotivated and you lose out. But being part of this group ensured that almost every one of them, kept up their motivation levels, kept up their enthusiasm, kept giving boost to each other. Any one of them felt that, no, I'm getting a little too tired. I'm not able to cope up with this assignment. They were all there to help uh, each other. And that's how they went uh, ahead. Many of them in their 40s, 50s, whatever their uh, uh, ages. In fact, let me share with you the most classic, uh, uh, you know, example of one of my students who decided to enroll for his PhD when he was around 85 years of age. And he did it. Once he started doing his surveys and research, which was quite extensive, uh, mind you, it involved finding out about delinquents, finding out about youth who are going against the law and becoming antisocial. He had to knock on the doors of the police offices 
obviously they had other things better to do and they were not all that uh, you know forthcoming but he was very persistent and at some point because of some bureaucratic delays his submission and approval of the thesis was getting delayed so you know what he did he converted his research into a book and he got it published so he saw to it that his work did not go waste even when there were bureaucratic delays or whatever red tape or whatever was happening that i think is an excellent example for all of us never get pulled down by this thing of you know what can i do this what can i do that you remember long back i had given this um, example of uh, you know a friend of mine whom i was visiting and suddenly his wife came out and started telling me uh, bhai sahab you are a counselor you guide so many young people you do this you do that can you please you know give a little boost or an inspiration to my daughter ah before that anupama says what to do with the family stops for every step that i take to my interest you are trying to take one step forward and they are standing right in front of you to prevent you from taking the next step don't argue don't push them take a step sideways take a step back turn around come around the obstruction and continue i have seen people as long as they are persistent this so called you know family members who stop they say no you are too old for this you are neglecting your family you are not capable of this why do you want to spend money in doing this learning or these courses all these people melt away if you have that assertiveness and that ability to be able to think positively and say that i will not fight they are my family they are people whom i love and maybe they, they are doing it with good intentions but i will not give up on my goal also maybe i'll mark time it will look as though i am taking a step forward as the military people say that sometimes you have to lose a battle to win a war you have to consciously withdraw from a battlefront when you realize that the enemy is too strong that's not cowardice that is wisdom that instead of you know doing something foolhardy and getting killed in an unwanted situation i withdraw and then i come around with better preparation and better force and i you know annihilate the uh, enemy here of course they are not your enemy but still they are putting that obstruction on you and if you learn the ways and means of not fighting with them not getting into arguments at the same time being able to push things uh, uh, you know forward come back to the example that i was uh, uh, telling you yes parveen says you can get over family pull downs by your perseverance and standing your ground be assertive thanks parveen when you say that it has more impact than me because you all are you know more or less at the same level and uh, 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 sailing in the same boat sometimes when i say things you know they have this tendency to say oh he is way up there so you know i can't compare myself with uh, him though it is not true that's what people say anyway i'll wind up with uh, telling you the uh, incident that i was telling you this lady comes to me and says that why don't you inspire my daughter sunday morning and the kid is busy watching something interesting the mother drags her and brings her to me and says see he is a great man he is a counselor he will guide you sir please tell him that uh, you know she should study hard and she should do this and right in the presence of uh, uh, her daughter she says see i was also a bright student i could have done any courses and professional and this and that but i belong to a very conservative family they didn't allow me to study higher so it's okay i gave up then i got married then i had children i'm already 39 years old my life is over i don't mind i am okay with it but we are giving her the best of opportunities she should do what she wants we will encourage her after the child went away i told the mother you know what you have done you have been a pathetic role model the child looks at you and says 
at 39 years of age if a person says my life is over i have no ambitions i have nothing to look forward to why don't i enjoy my life while i am 19 years old that is how the message reaches children so you should be a good role model to your children you should be positive in your own thinking you continue doing that and life can definitely improve along with that i leave you with next saturday's topic which is setting boundaries in relationships sometimes it is very very essential to uh, you know have certain boundaries to ensure that people don't walk all over you to ensure that people don't take advantage of your goodness and that can be done by learning a few very simple and practical tips next week when we have on 30th july it is not thursday sorry the poster is reading uh, wrong it is saturday 30th july 11 am to 12 noon setting boundaries in relationships goodbye and thanks for your patient listening